But first, start your engines at Paul Ricard. Ten teams, 20 cars, and 40 of the planet's leading sports car drivers. This is the FIA GT1 World Championship. With the likes of Lamborghini, Corvette, and Aston Martin competing in GT1, the championship features some of the world's most iconic sports car marks. Transworld Sport journey to the Circuit Paul Ricard in the south of France for round seven of the 2011 championship. Stéphane Rattel has been involved in GT racing since the 1990s. As championship promoter, the Frenchman has been instrumental in making GT1 one of the big four motorsport series recognized by the International Automobile Federation. The difficult economic climate, coupled with geopolitical instabilities, has meant it's been a real challenge to establish this series. But I think we have a unique product that features the world's most beautiful cars, truly famous automotive brands that also happen to make a magnificent noise. I also think we have close competitive racing, which the world of motorsport really appreciates. This is the second year that GT1 has held World Championship status and races are taking place at 10 leading circuits in Europe, South America, China and the Middle East. Each team fields two cars and each car has two drivers who swap over during a mandatory mid-race pit stop. Darren Turner is one of the most experienced drivers on the grid. He races for the young driver Aston Martin team. I've loved racing GT1 since 2005. I've been very much part of the, uh, the Aston Martin DBR9. But most of those races have been long distance, sort of uh, six hours or 12 hours or 24 hour racing. And it's a slightly different mentality to this current GT1 World Championship, which is a one hour sprint effectively with two drivers. I enjoy the, racing the car. It's been sort of detuned a little, little bit since sort of the, the heydays of the car in, at Le Mans. A bit more weight, less power and a, and a big flank underneath. But it's still fun to drive. Um, and the racing is a little bit more on the edge just because of the, the format being one hour. Each of the ten events held this season features two 60-minute races with eight points on offer for the winners of the qualifying race and 25 points for first place in the championship race. Vanina X is another driver with a wealth of racing experience. The daughter of endurance racing icon Jackie X, Vanina's new to the GT1 series this year. I think it's great racing. It's a real team effort because you have two drivers and for sure the pit stop is as important as how the drivers perform on the track. So it makes for a really great overall spectacle, especially with this format of two 30-minute sessions where the drivers have to give everything. On the other hand, it can also result in quite a few crashes and some costly damage to the car. In addition to sports car specialists, GT1 features several drivers with Formula One experience. And one of those works in the commentary box. Johnny Herbert is a three-time Grand Prix winner who retired from F1 in 2000. As a format, I think it's good. I, I like the, uh, the different manufacturers who have involved. I like how the, the closest of the racing is. I think it gives a challenge to the drivers, it's a challenge to the teams to be able to go to different tracks. Some work in some places, some work in the other. But for the championship, it's great because there is that sort of unknown factor that plays, comes into play as well. So, no, I like it. I like the concept. After the opening six rounds, it's the number 38 Lamborghini, driven by Marcus Winkelhock and Mark Basseng, which leads the championship. I'm really surprised by it all, to be honest. I think we've taken a big step forward with the team this year. 
and it seems like we're doing a good job. I wasn't driving the Lamborghini last year, but if you look at the results, they speak for themselves. So I just hope we can carry on like this and win the championship. The Nissan GTR, driven by Michael Krum, starts the championship race on pole. Krum makes full use of the Nissan's impressive straight-line speed to maintain his advantage into the first corner. Further down the field, the red Corvette of Mike Esmond and Andreas Zuba retires on the opening lap after hitting a curb and sustaining tyre and body damage. Another victim of the first lap skirmishes is Vanina X, who's forced to pit following a collision with fellow Ford GT driver Baz Linders. Whilst Krum maintains his advantage at the front, Clivio Piccioni spins out of contention in the Hexis Aston Martin. As the mid-race pit stops begin, the JRM Nissan holds a narrow advantage over cars 7 and 8 from the young driver Aston Martin team. Lucas Lohr takes over at the wheel of the leading Nissan. The number 7 Aston Martin drops to third following its pit stop. Alex Muller pushes hard in his quest to close the gap on the number 8 Aston, driven by Darren Turner. With five minutes remaining, the number 22 Nissan, driven by Richard Westbrook, limps back to the pits with suspension problems. The other JRM Nissan suffers no such ill luck, Although he's closely pursued by Darren Turner's Aston Martin during the race's final stages, Lucas Lohr keeps his composure and guides the Nissan to its fourth chequered flag of the season. The victory means Lohr and Krum move to the top of the driver's standings, with three rounds of the GT1 World Championship remaining.